so uh, intraventricular hemorrhage as a neonatologist, this is a, a big deal for me clinically uh, in that IVH is a major cause of brain injury for our itty bitty babies. And it's something that we're not really good at preventing, um, although rates have gone down in the past few years. And once you get it, there's really nothing we can do about it. Um, and so we've really been looking for different ways to kind of heal this devastating brain injury. So there's been animal studies that show that stem cells can potentially help either, both adult and neonatal brain injury. Um, and so this has been, uh, been something over the past few years that we've looked into for different models of neonatal brain injury, such as birth asphyxia or HIE. Now, as many of you probably know, um, human milk obviously is amazing and it has lots of pluripotent stem cells as well as bioactives. Um, and I found clinically that moms are, and, and lactating parents are super excited to hear about this and really almost none of them actually know that this is in their milk, um, that their milk has this healing potential. And who knows, maybe these are some of the reasons um, that milk improves outcomes so much. Uh, it's been shown in animal studies and in the lab that these stem cells can produce all kinds of different cells in the body, including neuronal cells and those specific cells um, that are found in the neonatal brain and those kind of baby cells that are important in the brain to then form uh, further connections that haven't formed yet when babies are born early. There have also been some animal models that show that these milk stem cells are taken up into the baby. Um, so this isn't nasal milk, this is just uh, drinking milk. Uh, so this was a cool study in which they, they made mice glow in the dark, and um, which obviously we can't do with our babies, um, but they made these mice glow. They then took non-glowing baby mice and had them uh, drink the glowing mom's milk. And they were able to show that the glowing stem cells were found in these babies um, throughout the body, but particularly in the brain um, when they brain injured the suckling mice. So this was one of the first studies really showing this uptake. Again, this wasn't nasal milk. So how about, uh, how about nasal milk and why nasal milk? So there's been animal models that have shown stem cells, again, not from the milk, but stem cells in general can be taken up by the nares or the nose. And that's because it's very vascular. We obviously use it for, um, for medications. Uh, and the neonatal brain has probably a more permeable blood brain barrier. So it probably allows for things to pass through versus if you or I try to instill stem cells into our nose. There had been a report a couple of years ago out of Germany that for a few babies in their NICU who had IVH or interventricular hemorrhage, they put some milk in their noses to see if maybe this might help. Um, but it was more kind of a case series and they didn't do any formal um, follow-up studies um, in, in the long term. So I'd read this article um, had actually around the same time been reading more about stem cells in human milk and was very excited about this. And so we decided that we wanted to do the first kind of protocolized uh, intervention using this model. So this is just a safety and feasibility study. So not big enough to be powered. We really wanted to do it um, in a, a scientifically rigorous way that would help us then plan for future larger powered studies. We were looking at short-term outcomes in the NICU. So we were able to decrease brain injury enough that babies didn't get uh, progressive hydrocephalus or extra fluid on the brain. Would they not need uh, interventions such as surgery um, if the, the fluid-filled spaces became blocked, et cetera. And we also um, wanted to collect outcomes. All these babies are seen in follow-up clinic. Um, so we collected outcomes at four, six, nine, 12, and 18 months. And we're gonna see if we can get 36-month outcomes as well. Now the challenge was that uh, I was funded in um, uh, basically the month before the pandemic um, hit the world. Uh, and so we launched uh, in March of 2020 and about two weeks later we're shut down. Um, and uh, so it was, we ended up um, then restarting our study that August, but um, the whole study took place during COVID, which as you know, in Canada and Ontario was under um, significant lockdown for really the entire city. Uh, these, these were babies born preterm, so less than 33 weeks at um, two NICUs in Toronto. And we administered uh, 1.6 mLs of fresh milk every, every day. So it had to be fresh because stem cells don't last for very long outside the body. So uh, within three hours, they start to die. So 
Ideally, the parent pumped at the bedside and then we immediately put the milk in the nose. That wasn't always feasible. I did go to a couple of people's houses who had active COVID in like hazmat suits and picked up their milk and quickly um, was sent to the hospital. Um, but ideally they would pump in the room. Um, and we were basically seeing do babies, especially these tiny primes who are on respiratory support, do they actually tolerate us shoving a decent amount of milk in their nose? Because 1.6 ml a day doesn't sound like a lot, but when the baby is like, you know, the size of a small burrito with 500 grams, 0.4 ml actually is a pretty large amount of fluid to, uh, to put in their nose, especially if they're obligate nasal breathers and are on nasal respiratory support. So our focus was on safety. We had a closely monitored data safety board. Um, we wanted to know, was it feasible? So we taught the nurses at the bedside how to do this. So did they feel like it was okay? Did it mess with their workflow? Did they uh, think it was okay for the baby? And then of course these follow-up testing gross and fine motor or communication and cerebral palsy rates. Again, not powered. So we were able to convince 37 parents to enroll their, their babies. Um, the vast majority of babies with high grade bleeds did enroll actually, presumably because as a neonatologist, we don't really have anything to offer. Um, and these were pretty small babies, average a kilo in about 27 and a half weeks. And about a third had severe um, uh, head bleeds. Uh, and again, we were only actually going to do the severe ones at first, but as, as always happens, as soon as we started the study, there was like no severe head bleeds. So we ended up opening it to, um, to everyone who had any degree of IVH. There were a couple of babies who still need, did need surgical intervention. Um, this was overall a very high risk group. Uh, we did have three of the 37 babies die from unrelated um, uh, issues in the NICU. So overall, the study was a success in that we were able to instill the milk in these babies' noses. Babies, re babies received about 17 days of milk. Our ideal would have been for sometime in the first 28 days to try to have milk, um, but typically they weren't enrolled till about day eight or nine because they had to have the head ultrasound. Parents had to be informed about the head ultrasound, decide they weren't going to redirect care, and then a reapproach, and then they consent. So it took us a while to kind of get those first doses it would have been ideal to probably to you know get it earlier if we could, but it is what well, it is what it is. Um, and they got again about 17 days of milk, and 84% um, got at least seven days of milk. We weren't sure how long to give it. Animal studies typically give a single dose, so we were like, the more the better. Um, and so we tried to try to give us a bit for as long as possible. We had no major safety events. These are kind of all the events out of these hundreds of doses that were recorded. Um, the, the only two that were considered moderate and not mild were um, two that had increased respiratory support requirements. So had to go from CPAP to non-invasive support, for example. But in both of those two cases, the babies actually had other underlying things going on and ended up having um, air leaks uh, in the chest, which were again, unrelated to us. So uh, overall they tolerated it very, very well. We did a lot of, um, we took qualitative aspects, we did surveys, these were the nurses and uh, RTs and MDs who administered this. So 162 people took the survey. The vast majority um, felt like it was relatively easy to give, that babies tolerated it and it was feasible in their workflow. You can see in the red circles, um, there were a decent percentage that felt like it was a bit stressful for either the, the person who gave it or for the baby. Um, so those are things to look into further. Um, we did have parents that actually gave it as well. Some of the parents were super invested in this and they did the whole process. They pumped, they brought it to the bedside and they actually gave the baby the milk um, in their nose and they were very empowered with that. It was really cool to watch. We did a stem cell analysis as well for a subset of these samples. This proved very challenging logistically because the lab was shut down for a long period during COVID um, and then trying to actually get the milk from the mom to the lab and processed within an hour or two of pumping during a pandemic was a little tough. Um, so we only had a handful of samples, um, but when we did run them for different cell markers, we did find a pretty high percentage of certain cells that um, are associated with pluripotent uh, stem cell status, um, which was exciting and kind of a proof of concept. So we're currently analyzing those short-term outcomes as well as we have all of our 18-month outcomes. So I sent those last week to uh, my statistician. 
And we're comparing all of our babies to a cohort from the year prior from the same hospitals who had IVH, who were um, parent milk fed. Um, and we're going to control for the degree of IVH and see if there's any signals at all for any potential benefit for those babies who enrolled. Again, it won't be powered, but we're hoping we might see some signals. And when we initially looked at our cohort, um, their outcomes looked very similar to normal PREMS. Um, so babies without IVH, when we just looked at the initial numbers. So that alone was exciting because we know that severe head bleeds um, do very much worse in outcomes. So that initial little sprinkle of data looked promising, um, but we should hopefully within the next few weeks actually have, uh, have that data. So in conclusion, we found that this uh, internasal human milk was safe and was feasible in very preterm babies with IVH. Um, again, was unpowered, but we're really hoping this will be helpful to plan for future powered trials, which would be multi-center um, trials that require many NICUs in North America. And had lots of great collaborators at CYNA and sick kids that I'm still working with remotely. Happy to take uh, 